Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of VA3FUC. Now, just let you know that this video was recorded when I was still learning about um, different modes and everything else in ham radio. In this episode, I talk about APRS. Now, granted, I don't know a lot about APRS still to this day. APRS happens to be one of those modes I would like to learn more about, but not 100% sure I understand it all. I know it's a tracking software. I know that the abilities of what it can do. But in this video, I do talk about it. So if there's something that I missed or I misunderstood, you know, comment down below. I'd like to read them out. Um, also, don't forget to, you know, sub and like if you like this. Um, you know, comment down below so I just know that you guys are seeing this and that you guys like what you're seeing. Um, just let you know that we do got some more videos coming out soon. It's just been one of those months where it's just like, I on a small channel. I really don't get a lot of stuff in. And when I do get it in, it's little to almost nothing. So once in a while, we'll go through spurts where I'll have something. I'm actually borrowing some radios from another person who recently just got some radios and she wants me to review them. So that'll be some fun. And I hope to have her on this channel too. And we're going to talk about something else too. So that's coming. We got a lot of content prepared to come out, but we don't have everything prepared yet. So it's still um, flip-flopping. But anyways, let's get into the video, roll the credits, and enjoy. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I appreciate it. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to My Life in Ham Radio. My name is Ron. So I want to thank everyone that's been watching. You know, I know I have not been on for the last couple of weeks. It's just been... I'm getting ready for my test is what it is. And the test starts in, <laughs> in about three weeks. So eh, it's getting tense, but uh, I've been doing studying. I've been doing test runs. And I'm doing oh, not too great, but not too good. Not too great, but not too good. Um, some of them I am passing with 70, and then some of them I've been failing at 64. So there's a little bit of a uh, gaps in between uh, certain questions. I, 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 it's just confusing. But anyways, I want to talk about one other option that I haven't talked a lot about, and that is APRS, otherwise known as Automatic Packet Reporting System, the APRS. APRS is kind of like a, um, it's a reporting service that you log into. Usually it's a 144.390, and you'll hear it on the radio. If you got like a little a Bofang or any of these type of radios, you can hear APRS depending on what city you're in. Uh, APRS sounds like an old modem. You'll hear it. And it is fascinating. This is fascinating to listen, in, listen to. Because if you got like a two meter radio, you can tune in. Oh. It's just a sound that just makes me go. I remember back in the old days of the 14.4. <laughs> if you're old enough, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But anyways, so APRS is interesting because it allows you to track others on a map. So they're just broadcasting their information. They don't care who looks. And all they do is they just plug into their uh, section right here. They plug into their radio. The radio will connect the their laptop or tablet or whichever they're using will hear the signal and then report it on an information highway website. Uh, the best way to learn more about APRS is to go to APRS.org is their main website for all the information to learn about how it works and everything else. But you can also listen to APRS um, even with like a cell phone or tablet as long as you download the decoding software for it. Now, the problem with APRS that I've found that I've found trying to decode it, it doesn't decode that well. So unless I have my call sign in there, it won't decode. I've had issues decoding stuff. So mm, it's been fun. But then I discovered this little website here, which we are going to go to right now. As I grab my window and shrink me down. No, no, no. I want to shrink me down. Not take me now. There we go. So this is the main APRS website. This tells you everything about packet radio, how it works, location, information. It is amazing when you would go through this stuff. 
And it'll explain to you how Packet Radio works, how to cover Packet, user-defined information. But let's just go to the one that's actually open to everybody <clears throat> using Google Maps. This is known as APRS.FI. This will show you who is active, who is broadcasting, and who is telling you where they are. As you can see, there's a lot of call signs going out here. And what it is is the map is getting the information and usually it's coming from either the radio that has GPS in it, uh, which some of these radios do have GPS. This one doesn't. This is just a regular everyday analog radio. But you can find them with GPS and they'll send out the information. And what it does, you select the, pro you select the station and then you just listen. And then it just transmits out on your call sign where you are every so on minute. And then some repeater will pick you up and plug you into the program. Uh, that's what I've been told personally. It's interesting nonetheless. But it's been very quiet. So I don't have any recordings of APRS traffic, which I wish I could get some because right now. If you look, no traffic. So it's been pretty quiet tonight. Uh, usually it is beaming through the gills. I will get, I'll hear like it happen at maybe around this hour. I usually hear a lot of APRS traffic, but today it's been pretty quiet. But what's interesting about APRS, even if you don't have a radio or you're just kind of go, well, why would I be interested in this? Check this out. So these things labeled WX, they're weather beacons and they report weather. So right now my temperature is minus 0 0.6 Celsius with a humidity of 45%. Uh, the pressure is 118.6 millibars. And I can go to another station, and verify that information which is not giving me the information today. Oh, no, wrong, wrong, wrong one. There's what I wanted. And I can compare it with mine. And yeah, that's what the two weather stations are reporting. So in my area, it's cold. <laughs> but you can go check somewhere else. Like, say, if you wanted to zoom out of the map. Let's go to a high traffic area. Let's see who is busy right now. Let's go into Florida. Big chunk right there near Miami. Look at all that traffic coming in. So a lot of these are boats. Uh, K-Storm. They have another boat here. Uh, Fredica. So you want to know what the weather is like in there right now? So it is telling me the weather thing is not operational right now. So that weather beacon is down, but we can go to this weather beacon. It is saying it's 25 degrees. Humidity is 8%. Pressure, uh, not too bad. Uh, winds are coming out of the fifth, are coming out at 52 or 3.6 milliwatts. Gusts at 8.9. So you can get like a lot of information, even if you're not from that area and you just want to try the weathers, you know, just see what you can find as weather goes. It can be a lot of fun. And if you zoom out far enough, you can see where the traffic is the heaviest. Like right here, there's a lot of traffic going on in the UK right now. A lot of traffic over here. Let's go check. Whoa, a lot of traffic over here too. So you can zoom in on any heavy traffic area. Like say you're curious about Japan. Japan has a lot of traffic going on tonight. Let's see. The, yep, there's all the traffic. Lots of boats are reporting their traffic on the same band. So this band tracks like all different types of different traffic and information. Like just zoom it out of Japan, it shows you how much traffic there is. Now, remember how we were seeing those bands out here? Like this one right here? Looks like there's a couple of ships out here. Then again, maybe not. It can be funky like that, too. You can report some odd information. 
but yeah, it just gives you an idea which way, what areas are the heaviest. Like, if I go into Toronto, I'll say Toronto, my neck of the woods is busy right now. So we'll zoom in on Toronto just a little bit more. We're we'll waiting for the map to reload. Boom. Traffic is building in right now, as you can see. So, yeah. And it just gives you an idea what, what type of traffic you can see. Now, right now, like I was saying, I'm not getting any traffic on the radio, which is kind of upsetting because I wanted you guys to hear a little bit of traffic. But unfortunately, there is no traffic right now in my area. But it just shows you what you can do. Like right here, there's a guy going right now. Uh, let me zoom in on him. So VA three TM Tiny Track Cage in Burlington, Ontario. Got this call sign information. And it just tells me the software that he's using to, to track himself. You know, some of them do it for tracking, some of them just do it for fun. And there's you know, you find some areas. There's another one right here. So here is a car driving right now. He's telling me that he's in service. If I wanted to talk to him, I would have to go to that ad that band. 443.050. Mike's in service. Mike e service. So that means he's did. I believe that is that he's online. You can also find certain information. Like if you're looking for certain towers in the area, sometimes the towers will be reporting where they are, the type of activity they're seeing. And there's all these different symbols. If you ask me what the symbols mean, I'm not 100% sure. I'm still learning this. Like, I haven't even experimented with broadcasting on on, uh, on APRS. And when I do start broadcasting on APRS, I want to talk about it a little bit more. So I just want to show you guys this map anyways and show you that, you know, even if you're thinking, is amateur radio still being used? Well, this shows you a lot of stuff. Shows you how many people are using the using digital formats on analog radios to still communicate with others. So I just wanted to put this out to you guys. So if you're still thinking or you're on the fence about getting amateur radio and this kind of interests you, then it's, you know what the answer is. Go get your license. I know licensing can be a little scary, but you know what? If you feel that, I'm giving you something to look at and I've helped you out, maybe pushed you, maybe to get your license. Let me know. Um, if you're a real licensed ham, like to hear from you guys also. So leave your comments down below. Um, and the day I get my license, I will be the first to tell you guys online. I am allowed a licensed ham. You'll hear my call sign being given out and hopefully I can pass my exam with 80%. So then I can start playing in the HF bands. Uh, or HR band. Uh, yeah, HR. Is it HR? High frequency. HF band, sorry. And once again, the HF, um, you know, sky's the limit, really. But uh, I'll be showing you guys what I've been working on and, you know, other videos coming along sooner or later. It's just right now, I'm just getting ready for the exam and that's taking up most of my time. But I want to thank you all still for watching me and for communications and everything else. I'm hoping to do more with this channel and uh, give you guys more stuff. But until then, 73, and thanks for watching.